And I'm asking you now to come into my heart. Give me light. Give me salvation. Give me a life that can only be given by you. Lord Jesus, I pray now that you accept me into your family. In Jesus' name, I pray. Beloved, if you prayed that prayer, then guess what? You are a part of God's family. Listen, that's worth celebrating. The Bible teaches us that the angels in heaven rejoice after one, over one soul that repents. And so, man, we are excited about you accepting Jesus Christ in your heart. God is a game changer. The Holy Spirit is a game changer. And life for you is about to get better. I believe it with every fiber in me. God is about to bless you. Now, for the rest of us, somebody look at somebody and say, I'm glad I get to worship with you today. Listen, I don't know about you. Oh, we've been on a 21-day fast. And I, I, I want to tell you, I, I, I want to tell you, I think that I've adopted a new lifestyle. I, I think I've adopted a new lifestyle. I, I, I promise you. I, 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 I went out the house yesterday, and I was like, okay, what do I want to eat? And I, I just didn't have no appetite. I, I didn't think there was anything that could satisfy me the way God has been satisfying me for these last 21 days. And so, man, I, I, I said, you know, let me go to Market District and get some ground turkey. I hadn't had fries in almost like 10 years. That's what it seems like. It's been like 21 years since I had a good fry. I thought about five guys, but then I said, no, I think I want to make my own. And I went and got some ground turkey, and I had some potatoes and cut them up. And, man, I, I, I made the two hamburgers, and I, and I made the French fries, and I promise you, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I just, I, I, I mean, I ate one. I don't know what I'm going to do today. It's Sunday. You know, I'm usually thinking about this and that, and I just don't have it. And I thank God that he's showing me a new normal. Amen. He, he's giving me a new normal. And I promise you, listen, I'm not saying don't eat, but I'm saying adopt the lifestyle. Adopt the lifestyle, and I promise you, them little headaches you've been bothered with, those little high blood pressure pills you've been taking, keep taking them, but I promise you, you'll start feeling better in your body. And there's nothing like having a, a body that feels good. You start looking good. I don't know about you, I was looking in the mirror, I was like, man, look at my skin. <laughs> it makes a difference, doesn't it? And so I, I, if you can, listen, adopt the lifestyle. It's a new normal. God wants to do some, some great and mighty things in our lives, and a lot of times we do more damage to ourselves, watch this, by not treating ourselves good. I always say if you respect you, you will respect it, your body. And so it's very important that we do that. Amen. And so listen, today we are dealing with Mastering Money Part 2. I told you on last week we will come back. And uh, we are in this thing, y'all, because I'm telling you, it's about to happen. It's already happening. It's changing. Some of y'all, I'm already hearing testimonies. God is blessing folk with new cars. I ain't going to look over there, but uh, God bless you. God is doing things. People, I ain't going to look over there either. People told me they went to the bank on Monday and they went in there with their suit on and they boss tie and went in there and said, I need to speak to who's managing this place. Uh, it's been a while since I looked at my money and here's what they noticed and here's what they realized. They realized that the money that they thought that was being transferred on a regular wasn't. The manager said, oh, we're sorry. We're sorry, we're sorry, because, but we haven't been doing what you had requested. Somebody said, I need to check on my money. I need to check on my money. I, I see, see, if I don't check on it, shame on me. Yeah, see, we give people too much power. No, no, you get up every morning, and you cut on your phone or your computer, and you look at your account. Yeah, you know how many people I've caught trying to, to, to steal money from me because I get up every morning after prayer religiously. I pray and then go look at my money. 
That's what rich folks do. I ain't saying, I'm, you know, I ain't trying. I don't want nobody asking me for nothing, but God bless you. But what I'm saying is that's what rich folks <laughs> That's, that's what rich folks do. They pray and they go look at their money. And I've caught people. I've seen charges for PetSmart for one cent. I say, wait a minute. I'm PetSmart. Ain't no pets around here. Somebody and then you call somebody trying to hack. See, they'll, they'll try your car by just charging something small. And some of y'all don't even look at it. You won't catch it. I call the bank immediately. No, cancel this card. Somebody trying to hit me up. Or I get a phone call, alert. Somebody just tried to purchase an Apple phone for $1,000. Did you approve that? Absolutely not. People will hack you. Yeah, I'm not being paranoid. You shouldn't be paranoid. But I'm helping you understand that there's something about money. Yeah, don't be afraid of it. Don't never be afraid to talk about it. Don't be afraid to get it. Respect money, and money will respect you. I believe that. Y'all are too prosperous. Y'all are too, y'all, y'all are saints. Y'all are followers of Jesus Christ. And you don't want nobody taking nothing from you that haven't earned it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We ain't gonna just waste money and give money away and be careful that you don't allow people to become a charity case for you. Every time you turn around, they asking for something. No, it ain't your obligation. To be, you know, it's your obligation to teach somebody, but it ain't your obligation to give. Yeah, you give and you shall get, but some stuff is a waste. Amen. Yeah, like she said, I'm teaching already, so I want to help you. So I want to help you grow because, listen, I told you that when God gave me this, that this year of no limits, and I believe that each and every one of us that are listening online and in this place need to see the limitless God work in your life. It's imperative that you see God because the more you see the limitless God work in your life, the more you would trust him. You can't doubt him. You shouldn't doubt him because God is able to do everything that we need. Amen. So all of you who are watching me online, again, God bless each and every one of you. Uh, there are several important components to mastering money, and these components have to do directly with us if our goal is to live an abundant life. Somebody say abundant life. Yeah, yeah, abundant life. It feels good to live that abundant life, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels good to be able to just, you know, be able to be positioned in the life. But can I tell you, it gets greater. It gets greater. It gets greater. The thing about being with God, life evolves. You notice that, think back and reflect back for a moment when you first accepted him. Look at how you've evolved. Look at how you've evolved. Let's, let's look at some practical stuff. Look at how you used to dress when God saved you compared to what you dress like now. Somebody say God is evolving. He's evolving. Some of the stuff you used to say God, God is evolving. They see things with God, and that's why, you know, I get real confused when people say, you know what, I ain't going to never change. I say, well, how can you stay the same in a world that's changing every day? See, see, God is about change. Somebody say change. So I don't ever want us to get to the place to where we are to the place of being so successful, watch this, that we think that there's no room to evolve into more. Somebody say it's more. Yeah, the first and most important belief to believers we shared last week. That was the first spiritual law. You remember it. I gave it to you. Tithing. Tithing, man, has caused a lot of people to be set back and to be stuck. Yeah, you look at your money and you say, ooh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Ooh, I can't do this. I can't do that. And here's the thing about that. But we do what we want to do with our money. We, we do what we want to do. Let's just be truthful. We do what we want to do. We'll go in the debt. We'll go in the red or go in debt doing something with our money that we know we shouldn't be doing. And so we talked last week about testing God, improving God. And I'm not telling you to test God as if that's some dogmatic way of speaking to God. But God himself tells us in Malachi 3 to do what? Test me. And my question to you was how many of you have really tested God? 
really looked at his word literally and said, okay, God, this is what you say. So now I'm testing you. I need you to open up a window and pull me out a blessing that I won't have room for. Somebody said, ooh, you talk to God like that. If his word said it, I'm just repeating what he said. See, the best thing we can ever do in life is to repeat back to God what he's already said. See, see, we reminding God, God, wait a minute, maybe I read it wrong. Maybe I didn't truly understand it, but your word said. See, see, now when I talk to God like that, he's obligated to tell me. Now, he may say, now, listen, I know exactly what I said to you. Now, don't be afraid to listen to God and hear what he's going to say to you because God is one of the best at checking folks. God will check you. He will check you so cold and so nice and still love you. He'll, he'll love you because he's love. He, he can't help but to love you, but he still will check you. He said, yeah, I know what I told you. I ain't forgot. I said, but I'm going to bless you, but it's going to be some other things I need you to do before I get you to that place. Because if I blow your mind now, what I really have for you, you're going to blow it. And he said, I'm not into giving you stuff to blow. I'm giving you stuff so that you can be better. Somebody say, ooh, God is so good. God is so good. So when we talk about tithing, every person who's committed their life to Christ and understood the importance of tithing, when you look at their lives, it's undeniable the way they are living. They are living, watch this, in dreams. It was Rick Ross. Y'all ain't afraid of me saying anything like, Rick, don't leave. Shut, shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Okay, Rick Ross, good. Okay, I, I didn't want y'all to get offended or nothing. But one of his songs, somebody told me, says that he's building, watch this, ele he's building dreams with elevators in him. Meaning that, watch this, he only seeing one way, way of doing things, going up. And see, that's what it is with God. See, the people in Genesis was trying that. They was trying to have a vision with an elevator that would take them to heaven. And God said, well, now, wait a minute. It's one thing to come because I'm commanding you. But it's another thing for you to come because you want to come to show somebody that you are all that in a bag of chips. So God says, so you don't understand one another? I'm going to confuse your language. The Tower of Babel, that's the story. Y'all read about it and see how it blesses you. Because I'm learning more and more about the sovereignty of God, being that he can do what he want to do, to whom he want to do it, when he wants to do it. Why is that so important? Because when you look at them building this tower to Babel, I mean to heaven, here's what you understand. He came down and confused their message so they couldn't understand. So they couldn't come together and understand one another to build what they were going to build. Because God recognized because they are people all on one accord, they coming and they shall get here. But then you go over to the book of Acts and he says this. People came together who couldn't understand one another. But he gave them a language where they all could understand one another. Only God can change the game in our lives. Somebody say tithing. By opening your mind to the concept, concept of tithing as a cornerstone or a, of a prosperous life, you have taken the first essential step in your own spiritual journey. You cannot have one without the other. It's, it's like trying to have, okay, it's like standard. Some things are standard. Like you buy a vehicle and it comes standard. These things are standard. You can't get the car without these things. It's the same sort of like with God and his salvation. That when we accept God into our hearts, there are standard things that we get. And, and, and we can't like, now you can choose not to use them. You know, it's like that car. You know, sometimes, watch this, you got to read the manual to understand what, you, what options you got with the car. Even though you didn't choose them. You just bought the car because you liked the color, most of us. When you was younger, you just liked it because it had loud music. Okay, so now watch this. It wasn't until you read the manual that you understood that there was more to the car. It's like the cars today. I didn't know this for about two years in my car that I could just hold my, what, I think it was a Benz at that time. I could just hold the button long enough and all the windows and the roof would open up for me. So I wouldn't have to enter into a hot car. I didn't know that because when I got the car, I never read the manual. And I'm here to tell you today is that many people fail to appropriate or get what God has for them because they choose not to read the manual. 
If you read the manual, how many, tell the truth and shame the devil, how many of you really knew that you could really test God? You can say, God proved this to me. If you hadn't rolled by Malachi and stopped there and visited a few of the verses, you wouldn't have never seen it or never understood it. So God is telling all of us, test me, prove me. See, it's not God's fault if we don't get to the place that he's designed for us to go. Too many of us want to blame God. God, you see me down here suffering. Why ain't you doing anything? God said the same to us. Why ain't you doing anything? God said, until you start doing something, I'll do something. God said, he helped those who helped themselves. Okay, okay, yeah, we still in church. Okay, but as with all other principles surrounding life, tithing doesn't work if you just read about it, think about it, or talk about it. Tithing works in your life only if and when you do it. It's the key. Reason why when we was going to school as little kids, I didn't understand it. I thought half was for the church and half was for the candy store. I didn't know. I was still, you know, still needing work on me. I didn't know my mama say, boy, you going to church? Okay, here, here's some money. Put this in the plate. And I said, I looked, I said, Big Daddy, now later. <laughs> Boston baked beans. <laughs> Fruit cocktails, you know. See, I'm going through my list, so I'm right, right? I'm setting this up. See, in church, scheme. And y'all don't know no, how can you be in church and scheme? Come on. I'm in church listening to the hymn, listening to the song, but I'm scheming. Do you know how many people today are in church and scheming? And scheming? So what was I doing? What was I doing when mama was trying to teach me the principle, watch this, of having more than enough. She was teaching me it because it had worked in our own life. Here, boy, you never go to church and not put anything in church. You never. That was the principle of the Simpsons home. That's why we always had something to eat. That's why we was always blessed. That's why we had, because she put God first. Maybe she went through some things before my time, and maybe she had a rough patch in her life, and maybe she needed God's help. Maybe everybody else had forsook her. Maybe she cried out to God. He, cried, he heard her cry, and he delivered her. And for that, she says, okay, God, I owe you everything. everything. And I'm simply saying to some of y'all today, how much, of, how much do you owe God for the things that he's done in your life? Somebody say, tithing works. Yeah, here's what I was doing. I was cheating myself out of the blessings that God had for me. I was selfishly thinking about myself and my own desires. I was thinking about now laters, fruit cocktail, lemon heads, Boston baked beans, all of those things I was thinking about, watch this, that had nothing to do with God. They had everything to do with my desires. And little did I know I was cheating myself out of the blessings that God wanted me to experience. That was a hard lesson to learn. When I think back over my life, if I would have learned that principle at a young age, I think back often and ask myself, I wonder if some of these things I had to go through would have been blocked from my life. Mm -hmm. Hmm, just something to think about. Don't know the truth to it, but I'm just saying it makes you wonder. The Matthew text tells us to what? Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Now, this is what Jesus proposes to each and every believer. He says, listen, seek first my kingdom, my righteousness, and everything you think you need. I'm going to get it for you. The text implies that you put God's will and his righteousness first in your life, and he'll take care of everything else. Matthew 6, 31 and 32 says, so don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? He says, this, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Now look, how many of us are dominated daily? With what we gonna eat today, what we gonna drink, what we gonna wear. Some people can't get up and move because they feel like they ain't got nothing to wear. 
But then you can go over there and say, listen, you got 20 outfits right here. You put this with this, you put this with this, you put this with this, but you can't move because you're saying, I ain't got nothing to wear. You know how I many people don't come to church because they tell that story that we don't have nothing to wear. We ain't going to church. So what happened over the year? The generations helped us understand that really church is not about clothes. It's about souls. So you can come in sweatsuits today. You can come in tennis shoes today. You can come in shorts today. Well, knee shorts probably. <laughs> let me let me rephrase, <laughs> bro, Coward. Let me let me rephrase that, cause I'm talking about these little shorts they got now. I think should only be on the volleyball court, and they 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 wearing them in the gas stations and everywhere. And I'm like, now your mom and them let you come out like that? Now, them shows is too show. I can't tell it them shows or, here's an old word, draws. <laughs> That's an old school word right there. I, I don't know what them is. Lord have mercy. But, but you understand how, how, how things shift? And here, here's one big thing with that shift. Because we think that, watch this, that we have to acquiesce to the culture that if the culture says this is what you wear in this season, then you're going to beg mom and dad to get this because this is what the culture say. You're going to be saying stuff like, I don't want to go to school and all my friends got this. Okay, ain't nobody never said that or heard that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I ain't wearing that and ain't nobody saying, well, you're going to wear something. And it definitely won't be that. Many are forfeiting wealth instead of accumulating wealth. Let me say that again. Many are forfeiting wealth instead of accumulating wealth. Somebody say, it's time to accumulate. Yeah, it's time out for forfeiting wealth. See, the problem is a lot of us want dollar bills, you know, Grants and Jacksons and, and Abrahams and, 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 you know, all of these presidents. We want all of this to feel good about ourselves. But let me tell you what makes you feel a lot better when you're wealthy. When you're wealthy. Somebody say, I need wealth. Yeah, I need health and wealth in my life. Yeah, we got to be careful because there are too many people eating away their wealth. They're drinking away their wealth. They're wearing out their wealth. Things that depreciate in value. What we want to do is start being smart with our money, making purchases that increase value. Getting something, watch this, that we know is not a waste. It doesn't depreciate. Get to the place to where you're okay with even buying a used car. Maybe one or two years old. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about when I say used. Don't think that you got to get it on day. That this just came out day one. And day one, you lead a lot, and it had already lost its value. So I might as well go and get something that's two years old. Watch this, because ain't too much lower you can go. It's already lost its value. Are you hearing me, beloved? So you, you have to start making smart choices. Somebody say, I'm on that, Pastor. These are the things that dominate the minds of the ungodly, not the godly. You heard it mentioned, the prosperity of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Y'all heard that, right? Stored up for the righteous. Let me give it to you in our NLT version, Proverbs 13, 22. I like this because I've looked at some theologians who look at the word stored up, and they kind of say that this is something that God has, you know, people preach it wrong. They say this is something that God, you know, has for you after death. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, your stuff is stored up. So I say, okay, see, that's why I like different versions because sometimes people are hone in. That's why I look at when I study, I look at different versions of the scripture to get a, help me get a better understanding in a sense of what God is really saying. Here's what he's saying. We have to get into a position in life to where we leave an inheritance to our grandchildren. Yet we don't want to watch this. Our children, if Lord be with us for them to come up and have to struggle. We want to give them a running start. We want to give them a starter's kit. You, you hear me? But now let's read this. He said, good people leave an inheritance to their children, but sinners' wealth passes to the godly. Now that sounds a whole lot better than being stored up, right? It passes to the godly. It passes to the godly. 
it passes. It passes to the godly. This speaks to the providential, providential hand of the sovereign God stripping the sinner, the ungodly, the unrighteous person, or uh, whatever you want to call him, or of his or her wealth. And here's what I like about it. Reallocating it to those who fear, who reverence God. God is in control of all things. All things. God is in the business of reallocating. He will strip somebody and reallocate their funds to drop right in your lap. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He say, give and it shall be given unto you. How? He say, press down, shaking up, running over into your lap. God has that ability to reallocate everything that he has you for you. Now, not only that, God will, watch this, order our steps. Now, if God orders our steps, watch this. He has a way of ordering us to, watch this, the right crossroad to where we got somebody coming this way. We're traveling this way. We intersect at that, watch this, we come together at the intersection, watch this, and that person was there at the perfect time. In other words, chaos time. It was a chaos moment. It was God's moment for you and that person to hook up. Now, when that person and you hooks up, what's, look at what they're doing. They're, they're not concerned about where you come from. They're not concerned about what you don't have. They're concerned about being blessed by being obedient to God. They know. You ever had somebody say, man, I was supposed to have been here? It, it, they didn't know why, but they were obedient. And when they were obedient to God, then you found out exactly what God was doing in your life. The Bible says, be aware. You may be entertaining angels. And God's blessings don't always come the way we think they're going to come. They may come with somebody who looks like they don't have a nickel in their pocket. But they doing the work of the Lord. They are coming into your life to bless you with no strings attached. You know you got two types of people. Those who want to bless you with strings. And those who want to bless you without strings. Those who want to bless you without strings are assigned by God to pour into you. Ooh, Jesus. Somebody say, man, I'm learning now how to discern those who are in my life. Some people are in your life only to bleed you. They are leeches. They suck you dry. You leave out of their life. You look like an old prune because they have been in your life. <laughs> You look like an old prune. They unsucked the little life out of you. They unstripped you. They unlefted you without anything. Only then you get the revelation that they shouldn't have never been in my life. But it's okay because you learned a valuable lesson. It costs you, but guess what God is going to do once you get the revelation? He's going to reallocate. Ooh. Somebody say, I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready. So he goes on to say in Matthew 6, 34, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring his own worries. He says, today's troubles is enough for today. Here it is, beloved, worrying about tomorrow will not help you for tomorrow or today. If anything, it robs you of today's effectiveness, which means you will be even less effective tomorrow. God, I think that's worth saying again. He say, worrying about tomorrow will not help you for tomorrow or today. If anything, it robs you of today's effectiveness, which means you will be even less effective tomorrow. Think about that for a moment. Think about that worrying today about something that you don't have no control over that you can't do nothing about. What did it do? That whole day of worrying robbed you from being effective, impactful, being an influencer. So you'll get to the place, watch this, to where God is taking you, you won't sweat the small stuff. You, you won't let it bother you. You'll see it. It may hit you, but you'll still get up and do what you got to do. This is what bothers me with some, man. It's like God has been so good to you. Then you go through a little something. You won't go to church. No, you don't know I'm going through. I'm just going through. So you lay in the bed. You just feel bad because you're going through. But what you need is a word. 
you need a word, you may need to see somebody else who has a word for you. You may need to see a story. You need to see, 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 here's the thing you have to let the enemy know. Yeah, I'm gonna let you know. Yeah, I'm gonna let you know. You know, I felt what you did to me, but you ain't stopping me. You, you ain't stopping me. Yeah, I felt it. Yep, you hit me hard. You don't play fair. I got you. I just learned about your little sneaky self. But let me help you understand something. I'm not quitting. I'm not getting up. I'm not giving up. No, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on moving. Because if anybody can help me, it's God. It's God. I'm telling you, the old toy we used to have, the Weeble Wobble, you know how many times I tried to knock that thing down? Ooh, we had the big ones that used to blow up about this, look like Bozo, and man, you be hitting that thing, and the more you knock it down, that thing roll back up. And I'm saying to myself, some of y'all need to become Bozo. You need to know how to go down like a clown, but get back up and be ready for what's next. Hey, sis, somebody say, keep it coming. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. Keep it coming, keep it coming because you're not going to stop me because God and gave me a glimpse of what he has for me. And I'm going, listen, some of y'all done seen the glimpse. Y'all done seen that land that's full of milk and honey. Y'all done seen the clusters of grapes and plums that God has for you. Now look at all of those things that was in that land. Here's how I need you to start seeing things when you read it. Don't read it so much. Literally, sometimes you got to read it figuratively. Those things that you seen that they saw was what? Resources. Resources. We have to start looking at things as, woo, them resources. Oh my God, God, you put me in a land that's got honey, resource. That's got milk, resource. That's got clusters of grape, resources. Because people still make, need to make wine. And guess what? If I got the grapes, they got to come to me. Y'all ain't hearing me. See, 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 we got to see how God is connecting the dots. He don't want you just to have your hands out all the time. He wants you to make money. Somebody say, I got to make money. I got to make money. I got to use what God has given me, and I got to let it work for me. I got to, God and gave you a mind. Make it work. Make your mind work. You got the most best thing going for you right now. That's why you have to guard your mind and your heart. You got to be careful that you just don't let anybody get in your mind because they'll rob you and strip you from your creation, your creativity. There's something in you. You can sit down and think about stuff. I come from a family man that was creative, creative. When we didn't have all that fancy stuff, you didn't have money to go to stores and buy radiators and stuff when you're stuck. They tell you in a minute, put some black pepper in it. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. How creative, y'all ain't hearing me. How creative? See, we, we didn't see, see, we didn't come from places where, where, where we make excuses. We, we made adjustments. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You know, we, 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 not, we refuse to be denied. You, you have to learn how to make things happen. God wakes us up every day with another opportunity because we have a mind. And those whose minds have stayed on God shall remain in perfect peace. Somebody say, I need that peace. Yeah, I'm about to use what I got. Make your intellectual property pay you. Make it work for you. Quit sitting back being passive and giving too many excuses. You are a child of the king. Meaning that you are created to create. Woo, God. Some of y'all know it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. What is the most money you've even ever asked God? <laughs> Have you only asked, God, can you give me $50 so I can pay my light bill? <laughs> or can you ask God for something where you say, God, let me ask you for enough so I don't have to ask you no more? <laughs> See, see, that's what we got to do. See, we got to start asking God. I had a prophet many, many years tell me this, and, I, and, I've, and I've lived this thing every time she gave it. I laughed like Sarah and got rebuked because the woman prophet came up to me and she said, God told me to tell you that you can have whatever you want if you ask him. I said, like Sarah. <laughs> she said, no, no, no. She rebuked me. She said, no, you didn't hear me. I said, God said that you can have whatever you want if you ask him. He told me to tell you this. And I started scratching my head, and I told her, I said, okay, I receive it. But I started thinking, 
that God wanted me to ask him for what I had need of. He's okay with us asking him for what we have need of. God is not offended. See, sometimes we ask God for stuff like we might ask people. Well, you start trying to figure out, like, well, I know they probably only got a little of this. I, you, I, I know they, they may not be able to help. You know, see, you start justifying. See, that's what you do with people. But with God, you're talking about someone who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's not broke. God is not offended when you come to him and ask him for, if you can fix your mouth to say it. And you tell God, now nah, I'm testing you. Prove yourself. God, you got to ask God for us. You got to, don't be afraid to ask God for big stuff. The stuff you can do on your own, leave that to yourself. But ask God for stuff that you know you need his help with. Ask God for that big stuff. Ask God to move stuff like mountains. See, ask God to move the stuff you know you can't move. Remove the roadblocks, God, so that I can keep journeying. See, you have to be able to know when to ask God. See, some assignments are God-sized assignments. Ooh, God, I hope by now you got a number on your mind. I, I hope by now you got a number on your mind. I hope you're saying, you know what, Pastor? I'm going to ask God some crazy. Well, we just preach crazy. We just preach ridiculous faith. See, see, that's, the, that's where we are. We're, 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 we're in a place in God to now we can ask God for ridiculous stuff. Stuff that don't make sense to the natural. Because you are asking him in the spirit realm. God, help me, beloved. Help me understand this. Somebody say, I'm going to ask God for some big stuff, Pastor. And here's what I want to, when you ask him, keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Don't brag. Don't be sharing with nobody what you just asked God for. Because them same folks going to be trying to ask you, well, where your God at? I thought you asked God last week for this. It ain't their business. Your job is just to live it out in front of them. Somebody said, I got to live this life. Uh-huh. I got to live this life. So what's this? So we're not going to be less effective anymore in our lives, right? We're going to choose every day to be effective. We got that, right? Same page, right? All hearts and minds clear. So we no more excuses, right? We're going to make this day do what it do. We're not going to worry about tomorrow. We're not going to worry about it because we know we worried about that. We got enough stuff in the day we got to be concerned about, right? That's what the scripture tells us. Okay, let's go on. It is a right to plan for the future and even to save for the future. But it is a sin to worry about the future and allow tomorrow to rob you of today's blessing. Let me say that again. It's a sin to worry about the future and allow tomorrow to rob you of today's blessing. Today is a blessed day for each and every one of us. God wants to bless us not just on every other day, not just on some days. Not just on weekends. The God I serve wants to bless us every day. I serve an everyday God. So he wants to bless us every day. If you want true prosperity, I, and I know each of you do, then put God first in all things. Can we agree? Here's three words to keep close when needing victory over worry. Number one, you're going to need faith. Number two, you're going to need the Father. And number three, you're going to need a first. Faith is simply this. If you care about the things that matter to God, then God will care about the things that matter to you. Faith. Father, he knows your every need and will supply all of them. He's a good father. He's not on a milk carton being looked for. He's a good father. He's nobody's filing child support against him. He's a provider. He supplies all our needs according to his glory. Riches and glory. And then three, first, keep God in front of every situation. Keep God in front of every situation, beloved. Keep God in front of every situation. Now, let's address tithing just a little further so that all hearts and minds are on the same page. A tithe is one-tenth. 
catch this, of all income given back to where you receive your spiritual food. Now, since many of you, you eat at different places. That's okay. But you can't, watch this, regard one for the other. So if you eat at multiple spiritual places, then every spiritual place you receive from need to receive something. A tithe is one-tenth of all income given back to where you receive your spiritual food. And in order to acknowledge that God is your source, you cannot, it's hypocrisy to sit up and eat your spiritual food that does what? Impacts your life like never before and don't sow seed or tithe. That, that is the ultimate. You want to be cut off? The quickest way to get your supply cut off is it's sad. You don't do that. That's robbery. When he says, will a man rob God? This is what he speaks about. People who show up and, and anywhere you go, even if you watch somebody on TV that bless your soul, and then at the end of their broadcast, they'd be like, send something. If you got up and shouted, if you wrote down and journaled, if you felt that was your word, then you need to sow. Because they did what? They fed your moment. You're going to leave out of here today and go eat. I promise you, if you get up and walk out, you're going to hear, <laughs> They're going to pull up on you. They're going to have your license plate tag. They're going to be, there they go, there they go. they leave and They're jetting out of the parking lot. You cannot do it. It is wrong. So you cannot think that spiritual food, watch this, that really blesses you, you can't do that. You can't do that. How can you know when you are being spiritually fed? Spiritual food is that which inspires you, lifts you up, lets you remember who you are. It gives you a boost, a feeling of hope and inspiration. It brings you joy, and you know you're living in divine purpose when you are experiencing joy. Let me say it again for those of you who need to hear this again. When somebody is spiritually feeding you, they are simply doing what? Inspiring you, lifting you up, letting you remember who you are, giving you a boost, a feeling of hope and inspiration, which is bringing you joy in your life. You just ate good. When you feel like that, secondly, let's address the components that deal specifically with you uh, as the recipient of God's blessing. Number one, respect. Respect money and money will respect you. Abuse money and money will abuse you. You abuse money, your credit score go down. You abuse it, here's how it affects you. Now all of a sudden you got to pay 50% interest rate you paying nine times for something because you abuse money you can't abuse it you have to respect it respect money and it will respect you one of my friends Larice Purnell was he did a post one day and I asked him a couple of years ago if I could use his his post for something I think I was teaching something on this before and he was talking about how people spend big money like to go get these bags, these purses, these clothes, these hairs, and all of these things that people do, which is all good. Take care of yourself. I'm gonna always say, make sure you look good. Uh, you don't have to wear, uh, 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 you know, you, you just look good, okay? Uh, you don't have to wear a skull cap everywhere you go. Look good, get your hair done, do those things, okay? But he was talking about how, I think what really made more sense was, he talked about all of those things but, had, but the person had all those things for people to see and to show, but they had no life insurance. They had a $1,000 iPhone, but if they die, they got to go to GoFundMe. Now everybody scratching their head saying, I thought you was balling. Y'all can't get them buried. <laughs> Respect money, make money do what it's supposed to do. Here it is, you got power over money. Don't have power, don't let money be powerful over you. You tell money where to go, it don't tell you where to go. Yeah, I don't care if you at the store and they on both shoulders telling you, go on and pick it up and buy it. Don't worry about it, we'll get it paid. No, no, 
you're not in charge anymore. Yes, I am. No, you're not. <laughs> you are in charge. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you in the store and people are like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just talking. <laughs> this, this. <laughs> that, y'all know the conversation be going on. Conversation be going on. One is the Holy Spirit. One is the Holy Spirit trying to be a game changer in your life. And one is the flesh. Flex is like, but look at what they gonna say when you come walking up in there like that. <laughs> <Y'all, laughs> oh man, when I go to the so and so's wedding, ooh wee, ooh wee, they gonna be looking at me, girl. You look good, man. Look at you, bro, man. God is good, huh? Yeah, he good. And you nervous as I don't know what because <laughs> you understand my point. Respect money. That's why I'm not enamored with everybody posting all that. Do it. That's good for your health and whatever it's good for. Socially, you want people to think you balling. Here's what I've learned. The more I mature, the less I want people to know how I'm doing. I, I don't need people in my business and knowing my every move and every moments. I, I don't need that. I don't need that to feel good about myself. No, I'm blessed, and if you see me, you see me. If you don't, you don't. That's it. But I'm not doing this because it becomes an addiction. Now I got another problem. So somebody say respect money. Respect. Number two, discipline. There's an appetite to spend more when there's no goals set. Mm. When you have no goals, it's easy for you to get caught up in spending. And we'll talk about, because that's the next spiritual law. Next week, the next spiritual law, first one was tithing. The second one is goal setting. What is your goal for your money? Where will your money go? What will your money be doing? What investment will your money bring back to me? You have to have discipline. Number uh, three, spiritual practice. Don't just tithe one time and say nothing happened. That's like that person who go to the gym. They're going to get buffed. Bruh get in there, he lift the weight. He get in, after he get through lifting the weight, he broke a little sweat, he look in the mirror, he don't see no bump. So he stops because he says it's not working. Don't miss it. People tie one time, and because they don't see no, watch this harvest, they think tithing isn't working. But because you don't see no harvest and, and because you don't see no bump, doesn't mean that it's not working inside. It's, it's not working internally. See, when we drop a seed in the ground, watch this. Before you see the sprout coming up, there's something happening. There's something going on that you don't even see. There's a germination going on. There's something that's happening. It's going to take some watering. It's going to take some things. And then one day you'll see a little green something coming up. Now, it ain't going to come up as soon as you drop it. Because it's going to have to take root. It's going to have to take place. It's going to have to germinate. But you have to understand and believe. This is where faith comes in. You have to now believe that you're going to one day see something. See, just like the brother who go. Day one, you ain't going to see nobody. I ain't going, man. That stuff is fake. That stuff is fake, man. They're always trying to get you to come in their gym and this and that. Man, I came and worked out, and I looked in the mirror. I still didn't hide nothing. Chest still don't look like nothing. No six-pack, no nothing. How many times did you go, bro? Well, I went once. What you don't fail to realize, that even that one time, something was beginning to happen. Something was beginning to start. You just didn't want to see the finish. Ooh, my God. Somebody say, don't jump out too quick. Just keep doing it until you begin to see this thing. Everybody, if you've never been a tither, if you start today, if you've never been a tither, in six months, I can put my life on this. If you discipline yourself, if you respect money, if you apply these spiritual practices, I promise you in six months you'll see the difference. In 21 days, we called the church to a fast. Everybody I've talked to, watch this, feel like that they want to adopt this new normal because they seen and felt the impact of, of sacrificing themselves to God and what is returning to them. They feel better. They look better. And they don't want to lose that momentum. 
So they're saying, you know what? I ain't about to go out here and get sloppy again. They said, no, I'm hearing God for the first time, like more clear, all of this stuff cluttered in my life. And it seemed like I'm starting to break through. You don't want to just because we ended, you say, no, my goal was let's adopt this lifestyle so that we all walk around, not just see when you walking in prosperity, you don't have to announce yourself. Prosperity will announce you. You you walk in places, people will stop waiting on people to come see you. You walk in stores and they can say, uh, go get them, go get them, don't let them go out. Because when you walk in, you look like you're ready to take care of business. You, you look like somebody. You got this presence on you. You command everything in there. And, and I'm telling you, this is the life. Experience it on many levels. I'm telling you what God is doing. He's breaking through in your life. You're going to see things different. Your conversation going to change. Your authority is going to be woo, out of mind. You ain't even going to take dumb stuff. Ain't even going to be able to be said to you. You, you, your presence is going to command people to respect you. They may not like you, but they're going to respect you because they see that you're not like everybody else. Here's what they say. It's something about you. I can't put my finger on it. It's something about you. I don't know what it is, but it's something about you. You know what it is, but they're trying to figure out what it is about you because you don't act like everybody else, especially people of us. With the, see, they, are, they think they already got us paid. So when we walk in a place, they're already like, they just walked in. They just walked in. they already thinking you coming with drama. Can I prophesy this over y'all? Y'all ready to receive this? Yeah, can I speak this over your life? Each and every one of y'all receive black cards now. When we talk about limitless God, we're talking about a God that's going to give you cards with no limits. You will get to the place in your life where you are so disciplined, you are so structured, you set up boundaries that you can have it and it not move you until you tell it to move. Why not you? Why not you? You tell me why it shouldn't be you. Yeah, you tell me. That's the best argument of the day. Somebody telling you why it shouldn't be you. And third and fourthly, prepare. Prepare yourself to receive because fear of success is even stronger than fear of failure. Let me say it. Let me say it. Prepare yourself, I got to go, prepare yourself to receive because fear of success is even stronger than fear of failure. So there has to be a preparation to be able to receive. I told you earlier about the person coming this way. You're going this way. Y'all meet at the crossroad. You don't want to receive because you, watch this, haven't prepared yourself to receive. Freely given, freely received. You're getting back what you've given. God is going to use whatever measure he needs to use to give you your 30, 60, and 100 fold. You thinking that your seed has to come back from where you've given it. But God has got people journeying to meet you. He's going to give it to you. And when they give it to you, say, I gladly thank you. I receive it. Blessings on your life. Don't be scared to receive and think everything is a game. That's where we come from. Somebody gave me get one, what, what they want for it. Okay, now, due diligence. Check it. Check it out. But I'm going to tell you, when you are in tune with God and when the person starts speaking, you will know that it's not them speaking. You will be able to discern that this is God. You, you will know that this is God. It's the key words. It's the things that they say in the conversation that will let you know that this is their assignment. They have to give you this. And they're giving you this because they already understand the gift of giving. They already understand that it's more for them if they give. And not only that, it's more for you if you receive. It takes courage to claim that which is yours because of that fear of success. A lot of people have the ability. You know why I had to go through 
grief recovery. I'm running a couple of minutes over. You know why I had to go through grief recovery about four times? Because the very first time I went through it, I went through it intellectually. Here's my setup. My setup and my thinking was stuff in life happens. Get over it. Not even realizing that whatever I went through, there was an emotion connected to it. The thing that had me from thinking that I can do anything the most was all the way back in the eighth grade. They cut me off of Kirk's basketball team. I made it to the last cut. Man, I'm balling. I'm playing in the playgrounds. I'm playing in backyards. I'm balling. I knew I had the ability to do it, but for some reason, the coach cut me. I don't know if it was politics too young to understand that, but he cut me. But here's the thing about that. In order to find out, in order to find out that I was cut, the gym door, they posted the list of people who were cut. I go to the door. Man, I got cut. And here's what I did. From that moment, I thought that I was only good enough to get to the door. I thought that I was never good enough to go on the other side of the door. So I knew I had ability, I knew I had skill, so I would do just enough to prove to people I could do it. But I never had anything extra to tell me that I, believe I, I was supposed to be on the other side. So I would do enough just to get up to the door because I figured my name and showed me that I'm not supposed to be on the other side. See how that stunned me. See how that stunned me. And it wasn't until Christ came into my life I started to understand. Oh, no, wait a minute. What did I need maybe at that time? Maybe when I came home feeling down, maybe I needed somebody in my family to say, that's okay, we'll get you on at the Y. I came home and said, man, I got cut. Everybody's like, <laughs> it was just a regular day at the house for the Simpsons, just a regular day. But not knowing that I needed something in that moment. Didn't know what I needed, but I know I needed something. I didn't know how that was going to travel with me and impact my life as I continue to grow. So I would find myself in all kind of pockets of life. Y'all don't hear me, man. In all kind of pockets of life, watch this, trying to find some way to the other side. I just felt like I was supposed to be on the other side. Didn't know. So I go to this pocket of life. Hey, that didn't get me over there. This pocket, that didn't get me over there. That didn't get me over there. It wasn't until I gave my life to Christ and I began to understand what he wanted from me, what I could get from him, that life for me began to open up my horizons because there was something called faith. Somebody say faith. God was introducing me to something called faith. Telling me that if you got the faith to believe, then guess what? You can do anything through Christ who strengthens you. So here's what I want to close with. It takes courage to claim that which is yours. So keep affirmations in your spirit when you feel that nervous starting to creep. Because again, you're going to be successful. Let me say it again. Each of you are going to be prosperous and successful. Each of you. Each of you. You, you, you're supposed to be. I'm not lying to you. I'm not playing games with you. This is the reality. I'm believing for you. I know where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be blessed. But we still have to deal with thoughts of, of our past. We still have to deal with our own uh, idiosyncrasies. We still got to deal with stuff. So what you're going to do is I got some affirmations that I want you to begin to tell yourself. Watch this. Often, daily, until you get this thing deep down in your spirit. You got it? Here it is. Ask and I shall receive. That's, that's number one. That's your first affirmation. Ask and I shall receive. Repeat those things to yourself. Ask and I shall receive. Ask and I shall receive. You wake up in the morning. I'm asking and I'm going to receive. That's it. You got to believe it. Fear not. It is the Father's good pleasure to share with me his kingdom. You are a child of God. Don't feel bad for being who you are in him. 
Walk in this thing. Believe it. You're supposed to be blessed. You are joint heirs with Christ. You are a part of the royal family. So now watch this. It takes a good pleasure. It takes good pleasure for God to bless me. You have to repeat these things to yourself. Don't be afraid. God is with me always. I'm not going to be afraid today. God is with me always. God has come that I may have life and have it abundantly. Speak these things over your life until you believe it. So you don't look at yourself like I'm a mistake. Don't nobody like me. No, we're not playing that. No, you are supposed to be who you are. Give and it shall be given unto me. Here's another thing about that. Some of you have been sowing and you sowed. Can I ask you this question? Have you called in your harvest? Do you have a harvest that's out there waiting on you to go out there? And, you know, they had to, when the harvest came, somebody had to go out there and gather it. See, 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 you just can't stand back and say, hey, look at that beautiful harvest. No, guess what? That harvest is yours. So now you got to go out there and get it. Somebody said, I got to go get what's mine. Call upon God and he will show me great and mighty things that I know not of. That's it. Remind yourself of these affirmations daily of who you are and what God is doing in your life. So as you can see, mastering money is really more about mastering you than it is mastering money. Putting yourself in position to receive the best of God. And, and, and it gives him nothing but gladness to make sure that you get exactly that, the best of God. Next week, we'll come back. We'll deal with the spiritual uh, law number two, goal setting. We're going to set some goals. God bless you. Come on, let's put our hands together. <laughs> Listen, come on, let's put our hands together because it's giving time. I ain't hear enough claps. All right, let's get excited. Come on, you ought to be excited. Here's what I need you to do, each and every one of you. Maybe today for the first time you watching me online, maybe you don't tithe, maybe you've never tithe, but you know it needs to be a change in your life. Maybe you want to experience that limitless God. Maybe you need God to get involved in your business. You need God to help you. You need to trust God. Don't trust your money. Trust God. Even the money says, the money says, the back of every legal note says what? In God we trust. Now, if your money trusts God, he trying to witness to you now. Look at your money and, and ask your money. Your money saying, listen, don't trust me. Trust God. We trust in God. You need to trust God too. So in God, you trust. And if you trust God with your money, I promise you, he'll line you up. He'll make sure you make right decisions. He'll help you have discernment. He'll help you protect what God has given you. You'll be better before. You'll be a better steward. You won't be wasteful. You'll be set up for your future and the stuff that you thought you were spending money on watch this can you imagine with all the money here's your homework here's your homework here's your homework the last in 2022 add up as much as you can remember all the dumb money you spent and when you get that total in 2022 of january add up all the dumb money you wasted whether it was on stuff that you thought you needed, whether it was alcohol, whether it was drug, whether it was clothes, whether it was vehicles that you really had three cars, you didn't need another one. Anything you bought that you figured was wasteless, you just bought it because you had it. Here's what I want you to do. When you get to the total of that, see what you could have bought in another state. See your house that you could have bought in another state. Maybe it was your down payment. Maybe it was that. You'd be surprised of the money. So when we talk about we don't have it, you have more than you realize. Are you prioritizing it correctly? You could have bought, how many want other properties in other states? Yeah, how many see themselves with properties in other states? So when it get real cold here like it is here now, you could just jump on a plane and go to a warm climate area. Then when you pull up to your gated community, George comes out and say, hey, you back, huh? You say, yeah, I'm just back for a couple of weeks. It's a little cold where I'm coming from. See, and then when you go to your home, then you got a screened-in pool that's attached to your stuff. See, okay. Somebody said, I got to stretch my thinking. It's not that you don't have it. It's are you prioritizing it? Somebody said, it's time to start winning, baby.
It's time to start winning. Amen. Listen, here's what I need you to do. How can you give today? You can give by simply tithing uh, to 77977. Uh, you can use our cash app information. You can also mail your seed in. No cash in envelopes. Do a personal check. Go to the bank, certified check, whichever you prefer, your P.O. box. Uh, those of you who tithe, listen, it's always about giving above your tithe, too. So listen, you don't want to just get stuck on tithing, but you want to also be a seeder. And sometimes you may want to seed in other people's lives. You got friends and families. You got people you and me. I don't know how many times I'm at the grocery store. Nothing hurts my heart more than to see a woman with kids at the grocery store. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Nothing, watch this, hurts me more than to see a woman at the grocery store with kids having to put stuff back. She's just trying to get stuff for her babies. And Lord knows when I'm behind her, y'all know she ain't got to put nothing back. Y'all know. I did that to one lady, I took, cause the lady's car wouldn't go through it. She was there taking up the line, line long. Everybody like, I'm behind her. I, 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 I say, just put her on me. I ain't even try to embarrass her. I just told the register person, just put her on me. She said, no, nah, that's all right. No, nah, that's all right. I'm like, lady, look at this line. <laughs> I'm like, lady, look at this line. How many times you gonna slide that thing in there, okay? Go on and go on and get your bags and get on to your car and go home. I'm just trying to bless you. I don't need nothing from you. This ain't no game. I just want to bless you because and I don't need to know your business. You have to be able to be sensitive to the spirit of God. Don't be looking at, oh, man, that's my life. Whatever the case may be. If somebody is in need like that, and it's about heart. Next week, I'm going to talk about that. Man, we got to get better with our heart as believers. It's some stingy, selfish people. All in the name of God. Won't help you do a thing. But won't help. So we praying for them. Amen. We're going to pray that God direct them to a fast and they can give their heart to him. Amen. So that's what you would do today. 77977 Cash App or P.O. Box. Now, for those of you who are fasting with us and you don't get my phone tree messages or anything like that, DM, if you're online, DM your, your full name and your uh, phone number. We'll add you to that list because on 6 a.m. yesterday, we released the fast, but I'm going to release you who was following us. I know some of you from different states and you follow us and you didn't get it and I didn't post it online. But we had a call in prayer where we released it on yesterday morning, uh, our fast. And so to you, I want to now release you. And one of the things that I got in my prayer when I woke up that morning is God, I heard God clearly say release to the point to where when I wrote out my prayer, I actually uh, uh, capitalized the word release. And I heard him say something. It, it shook me. It was like release. And he says, everything for those 21 days that you've released to him, whatever your hurt was, whatever your burden was, whatever your addictions was, whatever your struggles was, whatever you released to him on these 21 days, God told me to tell you that he was now releasing upon you what you needed, what you requested, and what you asked God say, since you gave, I'm going to give back to you 30, 60, and 100 fold. God released something on you. He released something on you. I don't know what it is. I don't need to know what it is. But God released something on you. You knew what you had need of. And he told me to tell you he released it. And receive it by faith that is gone. He released it to be remembered no more. Your life is good. It's a game changer. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I wanted to make sure I do that. Let me close in prayer so we can go. Men at work starting last Saturday in February, uh, we're going to be talking about how to renew our commitment to God, family, yourself, your community, your workplace, all of those things that God expects us to conduct and to live and conduct ourselves uh, uh, in public and even amongst our family. Uh, we got to make sure that we shine, that we lead by example. We got children that's watching us, and men, I, men, we just got to do that. We got to do that. I've realized for years that birds of a feather flock together. And so when you got somebody who cheats, notice his circle. Cheaters. 
You got somebody who's abuse, abusive, guess check his circle. Be birds of a feather flock together. When you got somebody who's righteous, who's upstanding, check their circle. And so my goal is to help men understand that there's a circle for them, that they don't have to feel alone. They don't have to feel like they out here struggling. No, if you want to be that man, that man that God says you are, then join me and let's get this thing and let's make everything around us better. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you for who you are. We thank you for the work that you're doing and you're continuing to do in our lives. We thank you for just being the center of everything we do. We thank you for being the way maker. We thank you for being a God who sits up high but looks down low, a God who loves unconditionally, a God who has never turned his back on us. We thank you, God, for blessing us even when we didn't know what to do and how to do it. We thank you for covering us and keeping us when we've made the wrong decisions and the wrong mistakes. We thank you, oh God, for just being that God. So God, we honor you, we bless you, and each and every person in this room, those who are watching, uh, by way of virtual, God, we just pray that you meet them today. Meet them with a special gift that only you could give them. Whatever they need from you, whatever conversation they want to have with you, you meet them. Meet them, oh God. Be the game changer that you are in their lives. And God, we pray that even as you dismiss us from this place, let it never be from your presence. We thank you and we honor you now. Bless us as we go out into this world and do the business of you. Give us everything we need, strength, encouragement, boldness, compassion, love. Give us everything we need that reflects you. All we wanna do is represent you in the earth. Give us words of wisdom, help us to keep our tongue, and help us to say those things that mean and matter to you and to those that we are impacting and influence. And I promise you, we'll give you all the praise, glory, and honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints of God said amen, amen, and amen. Love you guys, man.